Hi, so we're gonna try our hand at making some oars and apparently a video paddle, sorry paddles, for our surprise kids kayaks that we got them for Christmas. So, Kane Tire had these kayaks on sale and apparently have zero oars anywhere. Paddles, paddles, I keep saying oar because we all of a sudden remembered that we have an oar from, um, just a little inflatable boat. And so we took it apart and turns out you can uh, stick it together and make a kayak paddle. So we took one of the ends off and traced it out and uh, my assistant over here of hotness has cut out one blade for the paddle at a mahogany underlay. So we're gonna cut out a few more and then tomorrow we're going to buy some plastic conduit one inch thick and we're gonna slice the end and stick it on the blades and see how we make it. So while I was busy getting jiggy with it <laughs> making the blades that was really pathetically lame. My jokes get worse if I'm drinking, but you can't do that when you're working in the shop. While I was doing that, cutting out these beautiful blades, Jay was over here grabbing our hunk of leftover conduit and trying to figure out the best way to bolt that on. So as you can see, he used our awesome Teco Master, very old cast iron, awesome radial arm, radial arm saw. That was the word I was looking for to slice yeah, he promises I haven't been drinking and I haven't just iced tea you can see that we've cut it down the center and are fitting it onto the blade and the idea is that we will drill a hole approximately maybe here yep. and here and bolt that on it gives some strength to the blade and obviously a handle so you can go somewhere Barbie's just over here sanding on her also old shopsmith. You can tell we're cheap and like good tools. So generally that means scavenging Kijiji for a really great find. So it's Saturday morning. We're back in the shop. After an interesting discussion on how best to waterproof those uh, mahogany underlay blades to the paddles, we decided to forgo that whole thing because poly resin was going to be pretty expensive and we had the bright idea that we could hypothetically just cut up some five gallon pails. When we came home and went five gallon pail searching, we found a uh, piece of fiberglass ceiling tile that we still had kicking around. So we're going to take a few minutes, cut that up and see how it works out, save us waterproofing and painting it. So off we go on that. and. Uh, over here drying in the sun it's pretty covered in chicken shit and who knows what else out of the barn but for future reference a uh as a west pad does a pretty good job of cleaning those up blades we end up with. Hopefully the fiberglass ones. Good job, Kari. Any more to go? Great. a sand up job you did there Kirby.
Have you been drinking? No, it's Saturday morning. We went over this. Oh, okay. It's a Only whole new day. Alrighty. So we figured out while uh, using the jigsaw over here that it's a really good idea to have a new blade. Old blade, no teeth, doesn't cut so well. So we've got two of the fiberglass blades cut out and two yet here to go. The poor old jigsaw is getting a little warm. I think it's pretty hard to cut fiberglass. Jay's over there doing some fitting. Ooh, that's looking pretty good, isn't it? Excellent. So I'm gonna Krylon paint up that shaft after Kirby gives it some bit of a sand job for me. And uh, we'll be away to the races, I guess. Oh, uh, that's how you sand a shaft. Thanks, Kirby. So I'm outside now with some acetone we picked up at Home Hardware. Some Krylon paint picked up out of a basement. I'm going to give that shaft a nice wipe down and paint her up. I'm out here with my dog, Sandy, and... Apparently an audience worth of goats. We'll get this painted and we'll show you what's next. So Jay's working on a way to put a piece of dowel plug up inside so we don't get water running up in the handle. He's got his cut plug there at a, what is that, three quarter inch oak doweling? Yep. Yep. He's going to put a blob of grill glue on it and shove it up in. We're not putting it around the edge because the last time we tried to use this stuff, it went foamy everywhere. It makes a bloody ass mess. So I kind of have a bit of a implicit bias against it now. So in she goes. He's got lots of practice with this kind of maneuvers. <laughs> yes, that was totally a dirty joke. And uh, hopefully it'll foam up on the top end of the plug and just kind of wedge itself in there is the plan. So you probably can't see there, but I've got a little dollop of hot glue in that half moon shape to try to hold it there once we got the measurements all in place. And Jay's got one bolt in. So that's fantastic. We're off to drill another hole. Put on a... Put on a nut. Oh, put on a nut first. There we go. Loctite nut? Lock nut, yep. Awesome. So are you going to trim off the excess bolt yep. after yep. with the um, hacksaw or Dremel tool or something. Something. All right, then. Something. Good to know. Excellent. That's looking great. Fantastic. So we're just fitting the next blade on. want to make sure that it's on as centered as possible. I don't know. If it probably matters for paddling. It'll be weird otherwise. So we're drilling the holes first because we're using bolts, not screws. Can't eat through the plastic on their own. What size bolt or what size holes you making? Uh, whatever this drill bit is, it fits. Perfect. Just made it tight. That's how we like it. probably note that when we're putting these bolts in we want to be careful that we don't over tighten it right yeah because otherwise you're putting stress on your plastic and make it more likely to crack or it'll pull through the plastic or that that wouldn't be good either so as you can see we have our buddy the fly. They're annoying, but that's what you get. We got livestock kicking around. Really what I wanted to show you was that we've got this end now plugged up with some hot glue. I know how to plug things up. Usually it's the brat diet, but anybody with kids will understand that joke. It was terrible. So that's the bolts trimmed off and it's 
Okay, I moved back because I took Spark to the face there a minute ago. Ooh, paddle away, Kirby. I think for the first time in your life, mm -hmm. you're too tall for that paddle. <laughs> Use it for the other kind of pile too. I'm sure you could. <laughs> oh, well. Okay, so I'm just running a bead of hot glue up along the edge of where the shaft meets the blade. Just doesn't have to be there, but just kind of to keep the water from seeping in the sides because we have a wood plug up in there and we don't want it getting all stinky. You can imagine that there is a few too many dirty jokes going on. <laughs> Down here well. We weren't recording involving mucus plugs and learning how to just cough away from cough. Terrible, terrible. That's a heathen people down here in the Kirby shop. All right and uh, after this we'll just trim off the last two remaining bolts and I think they'll be done, right? Yeah. All righty, and then we'll be finished. Hey. Ooh, ooh, when I'm finished, I want to name a turtle. Turd for short. Is it? Is it? Is it for all of us to share? I want to name it. Close your eyes. Yeah. Everybody yeah. Finish it. Already. take them like when we go fill up the water tank or yeah. whatever yeah. and you can pile around sound fun yeah. okay yeah. always life jackets though right If you can make them out out there, those are my buddies. Getting so big. They say they're for kids, but that's not really true. Okay, maybe big kids at heart. They're good for everybody. Might be a little small for my, for me, but Amanda seems to be doing pretty good. Definitely not a two-person. <laughs> 